You're about to witness a seismic event. Fuck you, haters. You're watching Skip Bags Radio. Listening? Oh, yeah. Listening. Hello out there in the universe. Welcome to Skip Bags Radio. What's up, everybody? How you doing, Dev? Pleasure What's to be here, mate. Up? Hey, yo, this is Sailor Dev right here. We got uh, Neil the Great to my left. And we have some Chichilla. very specific, very special guests in the house from across the pond. Uh, I want. Let's go down the line and introduce That's yourselves. Uh, my name is Vince Knight. I'm a DP from London, and I'm visiting the US here with a movie. Yeah. Do they know what a DP is, Vin? Do they know what a DP is? I'm a director of photography. I'm a glorified cameraman. You're a professional at that, in, by the in, way. In other places, DP means something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the valley. <laughs> Dom, Dom, who, uh, tell us about yourself, bro. Uh, my name is Dominic Burns. I'm a producer, director, writer from the UK. Here, I'm um, just finishing off a movie at the moment. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm producing the movie that Vinny is shooting. And Dom's responsible for all of us being here right now, by the way. Uh, kudos. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Really appreciate I, I it. Apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and our esteemed uh, director in the house. What's up, Joe? Hey. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, my name's Johannes Roberts. I'm uh, a, a writer, director. I'm here finishing um, uh, the the reboot of Strangers at the moment, and I've uh, just finished uh, Forty Seven Meters Down. Uh, uh, Great movie, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm out here for a while. Sunny LA. Well, we are nice. we are honored to have you guys on as guests. Honestly, like we 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 talk a lot of bullshit when we're on this show. You know, it's a very casual show. We have we have some fun, but it, it's rare that we get uh, esteemed professionals like yourselves. But everyone from a DP to a producer to a director in the house. So you know, I I I, I feel like that. It, credit is, you know, you gotta give credit where credit's due. You know, you gotta give respect where that's earned. You know? uh, I, don't, I don't think it's very often we're called esteemed professionals, so <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Well, we start out every show with a breakdown of a movie or TV show. That's our, you know, kind of our mo. And and this week we were kind of ballparking it around, but I think we what we've determined is like, what do you guys think is the best movie? to come out this summer this year and what is the worst like what what is your frame of reference for that well the the, the i think i'm right in saying the biggest indie hit was what was that what was the biggest yeah indie I hit mean, de definitely that, the best that? movie and most <laughs> was, 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 uh, was that movie yeah it was a it was a fucking terrible summer it wasn't that pleasant you know i i've had better like movie summers for myself yeah, yeah. you know i i now that I think about it, I was kind of let down by it. You know, I usually when the summer hits us, there's that one or two titles that you're looking forward to. And actually, if you want to be honest, I think the movie I looked forward to the most, I didn't go see in the theater, but like Despicable Me 3, I was like that, that, that had the most like hype, <laughs> if you ask me. Like all the, all, all the other films, I wasn't really Baby uh, Driver. into them. Baby you know? Driver. Like that was, that Baby was good. Baby Driver is amazing. I, yeah, I, I got to get through that. Baby driver. Yeah, I, I did. I did twenty minutes, and I, it just made me angry. <laughs> <laughs> it, just made me angry. <laughs> it was just too cool for school. I love baby driver. Really? Oh, no, no, I just. It was, no, no, it no, was, I thought it was kind was good. of drive. It was. It was. It, I it was very it's, drive influenced. Yeah, it massively. stole from a lot of other projects. But Edgar Wright is on the did not he? He does that. He loves it. You know. Right. Do you know what? What kind of got me? In the gutter with Baby Driver is that I loved it. it was like aesthetically, it, it was great. I loved the whole pace of the film is fantastic. Although, instead of giving us a story we haven't seen before, they took a, a movie we have seen before and just did it in their way. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's what I look for the most when I look, go to see a movie. I want to see a different story, and uh, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be something too crazy. But I just. The, it doesn't have to be like the newest story, but the least thing I wanted to see is like something I've already seen before. And it's still a good movie, but that's still to be to be told. Did, you, you, you have to mention that. Did you, what is did it, you what guys? Did you, sorry, Dave, you no, go. go for it. Did you guys see Wind River? No, but I, but I didn't want to go see, see it. That was awesome. Taylor yeah, Sheridan. Right. That was his directorial debut. He's the guy who wrote Sicario. 
and he oh, wrote wow. um, Hell or High Water as well. And now he stepped up and written and directed this movie with Jeremy Piven. Jer- oh, no, not Jeremy, Piven. Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Renner. Jeremy Sorry, Renner. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, wrote yeah, yeah. and directed it. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Really good. Did you see it, Joe? I haven't. No, no, no. But I really want to. It looks like my kind of thing. I like that. Yeah, was, and, and uh, there was another one. I saw them by, I saw Wind River and this other one in Cannes. <laughs> And I've forgotten the name of it with uh, Robert Pattinson. Um, oh God, what's oh, it? Oh wait, a good movie with Robert Pattinson? Yeah, no, Pattinson? yeah, yeah, no, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time out. Yes, you haven't seen, you didn't see the commercial for it. It was like something kind of gritty. Yeah, really yeah, gritty. Yeah, 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 it was, it was brilliant. Most recently. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was chatting to someone about that yesterday, and they said it's it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the names dropped out yeah, of my yeah. head. Um, it's, it seemed like the kind of, I didn't haven't seen it, but it seemed like the kind of title that if you saw it, that like from now on you start thinking of that movie when you see and it. Use yeah. it as an example. Yeah, I it's kind of one of those things. Good time, like, good time, good, good time. time. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 Saw it in Cannes, yeah. then I saw it again here when it came out. Yeah, really good movie. Mm. Well, what do you guys think the worst movie of the year was? Yeah, we're gonna throw some shade. Yeah, we're gonna throw some shade. I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and I'll go in and I'll say like the worst movie of the year so far, in my opinion. The Justice League. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the worst movie of know. the year? Uh, I don't know. Compared to the rest, here's the thing. I, I think, like, look, we broke on, this time down. Out, time out, time, time out, time out. Yo, we, emoji we, movie came out this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit. But, I, but I, think, I think when you've got a movie, you've, you've got like, like you, there's a there's a bar. So, I mean, Justice League was always going to be shit. Emoji movie yeah, was always going to be shit. Alien Covenant, that was going to be a good movie. Yeah. And it was yeah. just that, 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 that kind of hurt. That was really that, that hurt. That, that that, was, I think that was the movie I was more, maybe most, most anticipating yeah, to see. Yeah. And then I was like, kinda, I was really let the, down by it. it was, was it ex- a wrong execution or do you think it was bad writing? Cause yeah, I, the, the, script, both? The, script was, the script was just... I just don't know what story... <laughs> what I mean, they were trying to do. The flute thing. I, I didn't just, see it. So <laughs> oh, oh like, you, you need to see it to quite comprehend it. I couldn't. <laughs> I just sat there and this was a movie. You know, this is a summer of like King Arthur, yes. of The Mummy. You know, it was, there's a reason 47 meters down did pretty well this yeah, summer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, you know, it was not a great, it was not a great summer. And, and Alien should have just walked away with it. Yeah. I, and, and instead and, you had like half an hour flute yeah. sequence. What was that about? <sighs> You know, Michael Fassbender playing the flute with Michael Fassbender was just weird. <laughs> I mean, there was just too many things going on there for me to even get my head around. Like, yeah, yeah well, weird. I have two points I want to make. Why are we so hard on these DC movies? I, I swear to God, we we we, we, are, we, we, we are, are so ready. We are so, so ready to yeah. come out and yeah. like. Like, to be honest with you, I don't think it was the greatest movie. But when I see all these Marvel films, I don't think they're the, the best movies either. And that, so, at the same time, like, I'm not, I'm not Ragnarok trying to. Ragnarok is better than. Oh, Ragnarok was great. Oh, Ragnarok that was so much is fun. better than uh, the, you know the new DC the Justice. But you know, the, if you were comparing uh, uh, tip for tat, that, that's I have, where I'd I have. I have. I have seen Justice League, but it's not horrible. It's not like oh it's fuck, not, what the hell did I just it's see? Better it's better than it's not Batman versus Superman. Man, it's like, better than that. You one, know, like so. I'm not gonna be too harsh on that film. Like it, it is what it is. But you know? I think, it's, I think it's, the, it's a comic book the, film. You the, know the problem you've got there with Justice League. I think it's there's a number of problems. Firstly, you've got the um, everything else has been covered this year, superhero movie wise. Yeah. You want a strong, proper, gritty movie. They need to look no further than Logan. That was brilliant. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you want the other end of the spectrum, you got loads of fun and chaos and basically a, a massive budget comedy. And that's Thor three. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. The problem is, is there's not really a gap for the Justice League to fall into. And no, the other you're thing. Right. The other thing, from from an English point of view, and I don't know whether this is um, this is different for us, because comics aren't really that big a thing in, in England. They're getting bigger, mm-hmm. but um, I mean, did you read comics when you were growing up? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not into all that. No, I don't really understand that. Yeah, I mean, honest. it's just not a massive thing. So yeah. the problem for us is it feels very difficult to sort of get into that movie because we're meeting so many different characters so quickly. Yes. Whereas what Marvel did was they spent the time, they brought out a cracking movie in Iron Man. And the idea of all these different characters that they've established intertwining in, in one movie together with the Avengers, that was exciting. That was a cool prospect. Whereas yeah. with Justice League, they've just thrown Batman and Superman together straight away. We've already seen Batman, Superman and Woman, Wonder Woman on screen together. Definitely. And yeah. now they're just throwing in all these characters. It's a bit much. And yeah. I know maybe if you've grown up reading comics, you might know who these guys are and be excited to see them. And there were some cool moments when Aquaman sits on the whip and that was really funny. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, here, here. You know, but for me, it was a bit 
it was a bit much. It was like trying to throw too much at the screen at once. Oh no no no! I I'm definitely you. on board with the rest of you guys. I'm not thinking this movie is, is on some upper echelon film. I just don't think it's just trash. But at the same time, you're right. They're doing the opposite of what Marvel has been doing. They're they're actually bringing us them all together, and then their hope is to now show them their own separate movies. Whereas Marvel had their own separate movies, and they brought them all together. Yeah yeah. You know so. Well, this this is one of the exciting things of talking to you guys is you have a different perspective by being over in and across the pond and having a different uh, like the, the comic book movies are so big over here and you're saying that they're not that big over there no no they're huge, they're yeah, huge. Well, movies are huge comics themselves is comic books aren't ah. as big in england the, mo- the oh, movies yeah. are massive yeah justice league did actually better in england than it did in that's what I was going to bring up. I was like, our international sales, if you look at the numbers, are very, like, they almost outweigh the domestic, you know? So, like, almost like all these movies are really geared towards uh, appealing to everyone else for the action flick, for that... You, it, Regardless if it's Marvel or it's DC, I think both are trying to have the action CGI superhero flick, right? Mm -hmm. There's not too much based on the story. We talked about a lot of story movies and a lot of good content. And that differentiates from, you know, something that's done to best. For example, your movie is very good in its story and its content and its concept. Versus where something is, you know, from these DC and Marvel is very generic. It's a story that's mm-hmm. already been told. It doesn't really, you know, somebody's like, oh, why? You know, we had uh, Dante on last week, and Dante was like, why are we, uh, why are we signing an NDA to go audition for this movie? We know the script. Like we, uh, it's a superhero movie. What the guy goes through some tr- trivial stuff and then you know fails and then you know reignites his his life and succeeds and and, and goes into success. So I think that kind of thing is is it, like it's already there. It's already something that everybody follows. Everybody can anticipate. But what is the differentiating thing? And it, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you more kudos, man. Yeah. Your film, your film takes such a unique, uh, a, a unique perspective on the horror classic. First of all, let me, let me you know, let's back up. Let me, let, why don't you tell everybody out there what your film is and what it's about before you know? We're gonna start oh, referencing. Can I just this. say one thing first? Um, okay. I think the my, my my pick for the best movie of the year was uh, I don't I forget the title, but I had my homie from Dead Deadpool in it. For a minute, and it was really good. I, that was way better than Alien Covenant. It, oh, life, life. Did she think? I thought it was terrible. Actually. You thought that yeah. was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was better than. Yeah, it was you know, better you know, than I thought, yeah. I, for because it had a great sci-fi element to it, and it had a horror movie kind of feel to it. Uh, twist a little bit at the end. You know, it was the one movie that I saw that had like, how do I say this? Like, had the biggest upswing as to what I was expecting to what I when I, when I saw in the theater. You know, have you guys was- have you guys seen the um, Jim and Andy thing? No, I yes. just started watching it today. Right. Yes. Yes. Holy yeah. Oh my god! Like, I, I am, Amazing. I'm not interested in in Jim Carrey. I've never seen Man on the Moon. I don't know who Andy Kaufman is. I don't know why I put it on. I didn't have anything else to do, and I was like, Why am I even fucking doing this? <laughs> and an hour and a half later, I'm like, This is wow. fucking insane. Oh, what, what, like, what, what, is this a just, movie? Yeah, and it's a Netflix movie. It's called Jim and Andy, and it's just about Jim Carrey talking about when he played um, Andy Kaufman. Is it Andy Kaufman? Yeah, yes. Andy it's, Kaufman. it's the behind the, the scenes footage for when a- Jim Carrey played Andy Kaufman in the movie Man on the Moon back in 1998, early 2000s, like wh- somewhere. Yeah. Right. yeah. And this is the behind the scenes footage he, that. They never took. shown, yeah. They never showed because they didn't want it. The studio didn't want it released because Jim Carrey was in character on yeah. set. Yeah. So, like, he would come to the set and it wouldn't be Jim. It would be Andy or Tony Kaufman. Yeah. Like, it would be, you know, or Tony Clifton, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, and he would come in character. And he, he you know, Everyone thought that this was going to be uh, a sued project because of the amount of post-traumatic stress that the cast and crew had to deal with because you couldn't address Jim Carrey as Jim Carrey. He's like, no, I'm Andy. Yeah. Like, you, you can only talk to me as Andy. It's, a, like, it's an amazing character study <laughs> of, of what it's like to be, in a, to be a creative person, I think, is 
is it's a character study of a guy who's at the peak of his career and he's as unhappy as he can fucking be and he's basically going crazy and then you see him now and, and it's just really interesting just how he's just like yeah do you know what <laughs> i don't care anymore the whole, the whole yeah. idea of the method acting process, yeah. I've yeah. always found fascinating. Yeah. I mean, the, this movie we're doing at the moment is all about it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, but I, I think it's absolutely fascinating. But talking about, interesting that we jumped to a Netflix um, yeah, yeah. Netflix film before talking about 47 Minutes yeah. Down. Because for me, the, the, uh, the nature of the cinema, yeah. you guys call it theatre out here, is, is effectively changing now. And, and, and it goes on to what you were saying about all the, um, the superhero blockbusters. Is that, in my opinion, I think you're going to get less and less and less films in the cinema. You're going to pay more and more and more money for it, and they're only going to be these massive event pictures. Yeah, yeah. And I think the cinema is effectively going to evolve into what we now look at the theatre as. Mm. You might not go as often. You might not. You're going to pay more money to go and see oh, sure. certain big event pictures, and everything else is just going to go onto the various VOD platforms. So like I think it's an occasion. So like you think? That you know, I don't, I'm not saying I want right? that. I love the cinema. You know. Me and, too. No. I, but the, I, I, um, but I agree with what you're saying. I think that's what it's. I think that's where it's an inevitable. I, I I don't know if that's the case because I think they got hammered this summer I, I, um, I, and you know coming back to because I, I like coming back to 47 meters down because it uh-huh. makes me sound important but <laughs> it, it, coming back to that you movie are important. yeah exactly <laughs> is you know that was a movie that was dumped a year ago was coming out on DVD was actually out in Walmart and Target had had the Bob Weinstein had put the movie out on DVD oh, and, sure, it, and, and it had got rescued um, well, they'd actually printed DVDs. They, they had done the DVDs. Uh, um, they had, um, I had, uh, they had dumped the movie. They'd called it In the Deep. They made this terrible video cover for it. In the Deep. In the Deep. And I discovered, nobody told me this, and I just discovered it. Oh, read wow. it, Read it online. And I was doing an interview. That's the worst. It was an most, one of the amazing things where I, I was doing an interview for the Weinsteins for the show The Mist. Um, and I was waiting uh, uh, on Skype to speak to to someone. And while I was waiting, I, I do one of two things: is one, I Google my name, or two, I Google the name of my movie. You know, and I was just like, oh, I wonder what you know. I typed in forty seven meters down. I wonder what's going on there. And this article came up that said, oh, the movie's coming out straight to video. And I had no idea. And the woman then comes and sits at the, at the on the Skype and says, like, ah, hello, Johannes. Um, <laughs> Lovely to speak to you. I, I hear you've just worked with us and you've just done a movie that everybody says is great. And I said, yeah, yeah, you've just dumped it. You just fucked me. Thanks a lot for that. Huh. Uh, and, and it just killed the interview there. And then. <laughs> um, but they um, uh, then this this guy, Byron Allen, for Entertainment Studio, saw the movie and he loved it and he aggressively tried to get it off Bob and, and succeeded. And I remember I was... I, I was uh, in in Spain with my writing partner, and we were uh, working working on this this other project. And I sat down with him, and I said, "Okay, so the movie's been dumped. We never speak about this movie again, ever. I don't ever want to. I don't want to mention it. I don't want to talk because <laughs> the whole process had been horrendous and had broken me. Anyhow, it had been a really tough movie. And I was like, "Okay, we will address this fact now. And now I, you never speak about this. Okay, and it's done." So that was it. Forty seven meters down was was forgotten about. Um and then halfway through while we were, were in the writing process, the phone rings and it's James, the producer, and he's like, um, look, I don't want to tell you this because you know, he'd known that I'd been through the ringer. And he'd been through the ringer as well. Uh, and he says, um uh he says, Look, this guy's come in and he he wants to buy the movie off Bob. And and I think he's real. And and Bob's kind of engaging because Bob's pretty, you know, he doesn't he doesn't want the movie going to Lionsgate or to Blumhouse or whatever because they're competition and you know so, right. so so he's but he's kind of engaging with this guy and I'm like so I told my writing partner Ernest and I said look this is happening but it's never gonna be this bullshit it's not not gonna happen uh, and then as as the as the week went on then I got another call going look Bob's just done another call they're kind of talking terms now. And then another call and another call. And it ended my week in, in Spain there and they had agreed to do this. And I got back into the UK and, and I had that conversation with Ernest. I was like, this is happening. The guy is going to buy the movie and he's going to put it out wide release in, in the US. And I got back into um, 
got back to the UK and it's two o'clock in the morning uh, and the phone rang and it was James and he said, look, I know this is going to kill you. I, you know, I don't want to. Um, they were about to sign the deal and it all fell apart. Oh. And so Bob went because he'd already had his uh, deal with Amazon and, and all DVD, you know, everything's got to be in place before. He had made the DVDs and he put them on a truck and off they went to Walmart, Amazon, Target. And they went out into stores. So they w- that movie went out and within uh, within a day it was pirated. And it was it, within two days there was a dubbed and subtitled Russian version. It was out in oh supermarkets ah, in Russia. Fuck those and Russian then, hackers. And then, uh, and then Byron came back and he, you know, he made that deal work. And he bought that movie off Bob. And everybody thought he was absolutely crazy because that movie was pirated to fuck. Okay, I, I, it was it was everywhere. I mean, we had people trying to stop it, but you can't stop that. What I had people coming up and talking to me. Oh, I saw your movie; it's great. And I was like, Well, well you kind of didn't because it's not out. And they're like, Oh, yeah, maybe I didn't see the movie. I, I thought you didn't see the movie, you know. Uh, and it was on like it was actually a part like the Cody boxes that you know this kind of bullshit piracy thing that people think isn't piracy. It was, it's actually part of the you know. It's like you could get that movie, um, and and they yeah they. They waited down. So long, long story. I was going to say short, but I've actually told this long. So, um, but um, but then, so Byron waits for a year um, later, and we thought he's crazy. We're like, well, you're waiting. At least put it out now. He sat on it for a year. He sat on it for a year because cause this is the other thing that happened for the, with the movie is we came, it was a low budget movie, and we came up with that idea. You know, I sat with James and I said one day we were getting drunk. I used to live with him in, in, in an apartment in, in London. And I was like, is it the producer? And I said, I want to make a shark movie. So I, I pitched him the idea and we, we financed it without even a script. Um, uh, I, I just said, look, you know, it's two girls in a cage. Cage goes to the bottom of the ocean. They've got an hour in their tank, uh, tanks to get back up to the top of the ocean. And there's sharks around. We took it to a sales agent. They took it out and they sold it around the world without a script. Um, because it, because it's because it's a because it's kind of cool idea and it's people are like pitch, yeah. yeah so it was like great but it was like you've got to move on this now and and I'm not saying Sony necessarily looked at it and went ah oh, but suddenly the shallows came and the shallows had you know 20 million behind it plus a whole studio budget and they just they just went in and then they just came out before us yeah and, but the shallows sucked yeah I, but do you know what <laughs> the weird thing is is then. It made a shit ton of money. It, so luck is such a strange thing. So it enabled Byron. Byron went, do you know what? The shark movies work. Yeah, yeah. So he then held on to that movie, released 47 on the day, you know, literally, I mean, a roundabout, that The Shallows came, but the year before, yeah. the year after. And in that time, and it's a funny just roll of the dice, Mandy became a big star because of This Is Us. And then the summer was just a clusterfuck bad movies you know i mean <laughs> not to knock anybody's movies down but it, it, there was just no originality this this year i think you know there was pirates seven you know whatever you know there was just every transformers every movie 27 was, every movie was a sequel yeah you know? every movie yeah. that was a supposed blockbuster yeah. was a sequel yeah, yeah. And, that, and, sequel and everybody was just tired and this movie and i you know i watched 47 with an audience and i just really it just connect like you know the when we did the premiere of the movie um, it was dead. The movie was dead. Like I remember people talking and like everybody was kind of smiling, but everybody knew it, the movie was fucked. Yeah, I was wondering we, like throughout this whole process, were you guys calling it that movie we don't mention? Yeah, it was still, <laughs> still exactly. So that movie, we, yeah, yeah. We don't no, mention? I, I wanted. I yeah, was trying to buy it. I was, <laughs> I was shooting Strangers, and I we came for the premiere at the, the New Regency here, and everybody we knew the tracking numbers were awful. Like the movie was going to be an embarrassing disaster. And the only person who was still going, beating the drum was Byron. And it was like, guys, this movie's going to be awful. And it was just incredible. It, it just tracking, just totally missed this whole, you know, female audience, dating audience, whatever, that they came out and they fucking loved. You know, so I think it was just something different. And I, so that's, it's a damn good movie it, at the end of the day. It's, yeah. it's a fun, it's a brilliant it, film. Every movie I make is, is damn good. <laughs> I, 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 but I, the, the, the reason I long storily told that is I, there is this thing about just doing risk free movies. So you, 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 because it, it, it costs, you know, even 47 costs 30 million to, to, to put out 
into cinemas here. And that's a small movie, like Transformers, whatever, how much money they spend on that. So that you do a risk-free movie where you spend 200 million on the movie and then another 200 on marketing and people have to go and see that movie. But it's coming to a stage where people are actually going, well, no, we we, we kind of don't yeah. have to see that. <laughs> but this, yeah. is, this is my this is yeah. the point I was kind of yeah. trying to make yeah. before is that I think it is depressing because I think you're going to get fewer and fewer original stories like 47. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to become even more tough to get those films out. But I want, the fact that this guy took this risk is yeah, remarkable. Is re but I wonder if that is this summer is going to change that because I think people have, you know, they're not coming out for Justice League. Th that movie's not going to... Is actually not going to break even once, once all, and that's whoever would have thought of that. Whereas, you know, like a smaller movie is like there's this movie I've, I keep hearing about. I don't know anything about it called Wonder, uh, which is out yeah, of the truck. Yeah. It's just everyone's been talking. Yeah, about yeah. It. Well, I don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. I have no, no literally it, no idea. But it's like I the all, kid with the deformed face. It, I I, you know, I know nothing. But yeah. I just seen the box office numbers are just coming in, and I, I think there's an all. You know, you look at the horror. I mean, I'm a horror guy, so I look at that. But you look at the horror world with original content is killing it um and already it's it's funny chatting like it, it's part three and part four i can see that they're really having you know you look at them um, uh um pitchmas what what is it um last call pitches um uh what what's that movie not horror um the, oh that, rebel, rebel wilson yeah what's um, it called oh, well, pitch perfect uh, pitch perfect they're 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 talking about it at the last chapter, you know, it's hard to now buy part three to get people in. So it's like, make this the last, you know, Insidious will be the last chapter, you know, it won't. But be, it's not. They'll, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll, 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 they'll do it. Like well, but don't, don't listen to him too much. He's, he's, he's already <laughs> no, no. writing fucking 48. I saw the book. 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 I saw the Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, you are, if, if my research serves me correct, yeah. you are the most prominent um, creator of horror, especially for mobile devices. Uh, Didn't you do a series? Uh -huh. No, I did. I did the world's first and the world's last <laughs> uh, uh, series for mobile phones. But it was, it was. But that's original content, though, yeah, dude. Yeah. And it, I think it, it's something to be said where you know, you anybody can make a film off of a book or yeah. you know a Stephen King novel or yeah. something like that. But you took an original idea and you created it on a platform that nobody else really uses. And I think yeah. that's valuable. Yeah. That that's something to be it, said with that. Yeah. No. No. That was a weird. That was before. Or smartphones so that was for that was oh, for like right. uh, so the hammer thing was it yeah uh, it, it was it was a uh, horror channel uh but they then yeah the sort of same people then did the hammer one the beyond the rave thing yeah, that the yeah. tears did um yeah that was that was that killed my career for about four years. I didn't work for four years after that. Really? Yeah, because they did. It was like twenty. <laughs> See, I would hire you in a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weddings. Uh, <laughs> Get this guy on the phone. It was. Um, it was twenty. Like he was ahead of the curve. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little episodes, and uh, what would happen is you get a in each episode, someone would get a text on their phone, and it would say, "You've won a wish. You now you can make a wish as long as you forward it to two people." And then each episode, they would make a wish, like. And it would be fun stuff like, you know, I wish, uh, I don't know, there's one where he wishes uh, he, he can see through clothes because he's, he's watching a girl's basketball game and then he can see, <laughs> but then it all becomes wrong and he sees horrible things. And, you know, so each time it's monkey's paw, each time it just became horrible. And it, it was kind of for a two minute segment, but the technology wasn't there to download on the phone. And then gotcha. what they did is they released it as one as a feature film oh, on DVD. Yeah. And we had Sean Pert, we do like this, um, uh, like Crypt Keeper kind of thing in between. It's kind of a fun movie. I sometimes, huh. like if, if I were to watch anything I've done like drunk, it's kind of fun for that. <laughs> but, but the reviews for that movie, and I, I've, I've had some tough reviews, but the reviews- Revolve in there, there, There's one on Dread Central that just ends with, fuck this movie. <laughs> 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 um, but, but yeah, that uh, four years I didn't work. That was that was end game. So, yeah. I think you're just ahead but of the curve. But thanks for bringing man. that up. Well, <laughs> well I, I, you know, I'm just here to reopen old uh, wounds, yeah. man. I'm just here to tear the scab off of things. <laughs> I, look, uh, we. I think you were ahead of the curve with that because I think that 
even if the execution was not necessarily how you wanted it to play out or whatever i think the fact of of gauging an original story toward mobile is 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 a clutch thing now in the new days i think now the technology has gotten to the point where 80 percent of the traffic online is viewed through mobile yeah. you know so but i think the difference is is now to be honest nobody needs uh stuff made directly for a cell phone because exactly. everybody just watches fucking Transformers or, or, or 47 minutes down on. You now get it when you buy a DVD is they have a, a, a version that you can watch on your phone. Oh, it's exactly. like, holy fucking shit, Yeah, but shit, I mean, the, thing, the like. online platforms have literally changed the way films yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you now, when you're writing now, you have to be... If you think about it, when you were a kid, I mean, when I was younger, I would go into Blockbuster or whatever other shop we'd have in the UK. I'd spend, you know, an hour arguing with my mates on a Friday or a Saturday night mm. about what we're going to hire. Yeah. We'd pick one or two films, we'd go home, we'd run with them. You know, we'd yeah. watch them no matter how shite they yeah, were. We'd yeah, watch yeah, exactly. them. Yeah, exactly. I miss that so much. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, desperately yeah. and and, and um now you you put on netflix and if it hasn't entertained you in two minutes yeah. you flick it off skip, yeah, skip. so yeah. now literally yeah, when sure. you're when you're writing now you have to bear in mind that the majority of your audience are going to very likely see it on that plot on that platform yeah, yeah, therefore right. you can't have a slow brood in beginning you can't have you know the the kind of the classic script thing is to have an inciting incident after yeah, like yeah, 20 yeah, pages yeah, you know yeah, you gotta yeah. have it after two yeah. now yeah. you know did you have to do with um because i i i mean i grew up making movies for for you know that straight to video market and and there was a whole thing that i guess you kind of have to look at now with netflix i don't know it so much um is is you'd have to change the titles because uh if your if your movie began with an a oh it, yeah totally. it, it was the <laughs> yeah. first thing on the shelf that they saw but then they'd chosen something else before by the time they got to the end and if, if it began with a z they'd already chosen by the ooh, time they got ooh, it so ooh. you've got to <laughs> and you would have to choose your title oh, it's, 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 it's no coincidence no I've made a yeah, film called Allies I've made a film called Airborne yeah, yeah. seriously there's actual statistics to support yeah, that yeah, 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 no, yeah that's yeah. a real thing yeah, so yeah. calling your yeah, film yeah. with the Beginning, beginning with A is like. Well, a that's thing. why your your film begins with a number. Yeah, that's first and foremost, but, well, right? Well, I did a, I did a movie, uh, which is how Dom and I met. I did a movie called F, just the letter F. Shite and, title. Yeah, it's, it's 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 the most ungoogleable thing. To, people are like, "What? How are we supposed to find this exactly. fucking movie?" <laughs> yeah, right. it wasn't pirated though. Yeah, it wasn't. Literally, wasn't. Pirated. I don't know how you got away with that title. Yeah, how I did you know. get away? With I it? don't know. I I I love it, but yeah, it um it. Uh, well, nobody saw it, so that that would probably answer. But no, that. seriously though, I mean that uh, Joe's film F is absolutely belting. That's how I met him. I totally fanboyed out when he came to a. Um, premiere of mine or something yeah it was it, it, I can't, I can't. it was, uh, was how, it a how, party, how, yeah it was I, I I would invite myself to any place that, where I could get a free <laughs> drink yeah I think it was how not to be a loser yeah maybe but the anyway I, I'd seen F and I was a huge fan if you want to, if you if you, anyone out here who's a horror fan wants to check out a belting low budget horror movie English movie called F it's really worth looking up it's an absolute cracker and it really holds up well how do we look it up though yeah yeah well, well yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they actually it, it came out here and they called it the expelled because yeah, they, oh. they couldn't. They they came. I remember the names. They, That's F. Yeah, they 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 came up. They some of the names to try and get it. A plus assassins was oh. one of their names. Aftermath. No, oh, it's no, another no. name. They were coming oh, nice. up with all these puns, and I was like, okay, so when you please. search the expelled, F comes up. Does it? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of the Breakfast Club meets Assault and Precinct Thirteen. I, I love it when, but when the marketers get involved with the movie, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just. You I did. remember when we did, uh, I did uh, a movie called Airborne and um, we, we offered it to China and China watched the movie and, and I thought they were, when they suggested coming back, this suggestion when they came back to me, I genuinely thought they were joking. Yeah. And they came back and said, we, we like it, we, we want to take it, but can we recut it so the Chinese government saves the day in the end? Yeah. Are you like, serious? <laughs> well, well, that's China for how, sure. How they're going to do Chinese that. And did they do it? Did you do no, it? No, I did a fuck. I'm not going to. I want to know to start. Yeah. I would have <laughs> yeah, I I would have just handed it over. And, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how big their checkbook is. Yeah. I, right? I want to see that cut. Well, yeah, I yeah. want to see that cut. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's. Um, no you, a UFO is different here. It's, what is it? It's alien, alien uprising. Alien yeah. uprising. Yeah, that, There's that, another A. Yeah. Crikey, yeah, 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 they're not stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I we want to talk about uh, 47 meters down because, dude, uh, I I want to ask you where did you come up with this idea? Because first of all, I'm gonna preface this with I am 
a huge fan of sharks and diving. I mm. grew up in the Florida. I grew, I'm from Florida. I'm from Tampa, but I grew up in the Florida Keys, diving with sharks. So when I heard the concept of this movie, and I've listened to you describe it on other interviews and everything like that, yeah. I it inst- I have to admit I have not seen the film itself, but um, it, I, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to to see it. Because- Pirate Bay is probably the easiest <laughs> thing. No, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you directly. What's your Vimo? <laughs> You know, but here's the thing. Like, I think it's such a unique story. You know, that's the thing. Like, it's like Saw. Like, if you if you can incorporate characters in a confined environment and, and make it interesting. And the, the from what I'm interpreting, not even, I don't, I don't even have a, a, a speaking role on, like, I can't even speak on this film because I haven't even seen it, but what I'm interpreting is that it's it's more about the characters than it is about the the horror of the shark, you know? Like, yeah. it's more about, correct me if I'm wrong, what do you think, man? Because I, I really feel like that's a valuable asset. Like, that's, that's something that draws a lot of attention that I think is lacking in today's content. And I think that the fact that you did this and you call it like, oh, you know, it's it's the movie we'll never speak of again. And I go, dude, this is the movie I want to speak of all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Do you know what the, the difference with it was? It, it, it didn't come from. I'm a big shark fan as well. I, I mean, I'm a diver and, and love. I am not. I, I am not. A, I am not Sharks are my favorite yeah. animal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, great. Uh, it's uh, funny. We, we, I'm yeah, I'm it's the. I sometimes have to. You know, there's an ethical thing. Is doing a shark movie bad for sharks? I kind of think it's not. I think it's good. No, it's not. Yeah, I, I think it think makes. So. Pe- I think it makes. It's like dinosaurs. People just yeah. like they're excited about them. But the people um, who d- freaked out about the sharks from Jaws, fuck them. They're idiots. Yeah, yeah you know it's. Um, but the 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 reason for the movie was not so much uh, the Jaws thing. Isn't you know Jaws is a great movie, but that's not what I made this movie. I made. I wanted to to make like the abyss or leviathan or i just hadn't seen an underwater movie for like yeah for so long they used to be like that in the 80s the, even the our first the first poster that they sold the movie off was when they showed it to me i was like that's leviathan that's fucking great i've always <laughs> wanted to make that you know when you start to see that you're you know the concept is the movie that you you know that's that's i would want to take that from a video store or whatever um so yeah i just wanted to do like total under and the sharks are just the met you know the the presence around there but it's not like a body count like shark attack movie See, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough watch i mean um, yeah, one, one of the things that's in a good way you know yeah, one yeah. of the things that I, i've we've banged on about it many times before but i think the way you get that juxtaposition of um of like that is so claustrophobic yeah and so like you feel like you can't breathe, but then at the same time, completely contrary to that, is yeah. this massive space all around. Yeah, you know, with being in the sea and the point where she gets lost under the sea. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's some. That, I mean, I don't know how you managed to find it, that balance. I mean, that's that's that came from. Uh, if you're you're a diver, you you know that the that the sort of main set piece in it. There's a moment where she she's um uh you know there she's at the bottom of the ocean. She's she's gone out. This is Mandy. She's gone out of the cage to try and find the the diver that's come to help her and they can see the torch and stuff and she's communicating to her sister in the cage and she she sort of swims out uh and then she gets the torch and she's the guy's not there and she's like oh fuck I, i'll come back now and as she turns around she doesn't realize which way she comes from and she can't hear now anymore and she's just surrounded by just blue and she has to just swim out and it's called swimming out into the blue when you do it i, I did it uh, a, a diving instructor took me in in Egypt. Just so you basically normally when you go diving, you you've got like a reef. Uh, uh, you know, you've got you've got reference. Yeah, frame yeah. of reference. Yeah, frame of reference. Yeah. And to go out into the blue is like nothing above, nothing below. You just go, and it's fucking terrifying. Do you, do you, know, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> so do you, do you know whether you're upside down? Yeah, you can you, you you can get lost. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's so one of the reasons why yeah. yeah. everything yeah. is blue. Yeah, yeah, it's just you. Just, and like, um, I love this concept for this yeah. movie for yeah. that reason. Yeah, and it's and it's so we. I just wanted that was the thing that was just in my mind. It's just to to do this point of view camera, like in her mask, as you're just going out, and you would do like when I did it in Egypt, like suddenly fish would come. 
you know, past you, and you'd be like, where, oh, where shit. the fuck? And it is, yeah, you get like sweaty <laughs> bars, and it's just like, which fucking way do you go? And it's, and yeah, you could go up, but actually, you might be in. You know, they tell you to watch which way your bubbles are going because you're so disorientated. So like is space. it like a, a rite of passage for a diver to no, have to do this? No, no. I, I, <laughs> it, it's a, it's did you a, do it on purpose? When yeah, you but it was a very cool thing to do in a very gentle, with a diving instructor way to do it. Yeah, well, definitely to do that don't. for so you're real. not recommending that no, everyone goes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I would, that would, it, that's my worst nightmare. I love diving, Oof. but that's my worst fucking nightmare, yeah. H have you seen the movie uh, Buried? With, yeah, with yeah, Ryan yeah, Reynolds. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because okay, I was just thinking about that film because, yeah. well, in that film, they're in the coffin. Have you seen this movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the, this coffin the entire time. It's like, how the hell am I watching this shit? But they actually, like, they make it work with the I way, like, so. I, like, I really like, like, like I mentioned. Well, yeah. so that, that, was, what I was wondering. that brings a practicality aspect to one of the things I was going to ask you about filming this. Like, how difficult was that filming underwater? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I know the logistics of being underwater. Yeah. First of all, just living and doing that as a dive. And then I bring the whole film dimension to it and yeah, framing it up. Like, how the fuck did you do that, bro? It, 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 it was it was easy. Yeah, it was easy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was pretty tough. I mean, we had an amazing crew. The, the DP Mark Silk is like the top, you know, underwater guy, and you know him, him and his team were just incredible. Um, and but it it was tough. Uh, like, um, did you ever have those moments where you maybe got lost, like uh, during the filming? Did the did the filming ever become real? No, 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 because it's all in a tank. Oh, it's all okay. in a tank, but you, right. you, you've got to imagine how horrendous this was. So I wrote this and I thought, because I'd just I'd done like oh, oh. A, quite a tough gig uh, called Other Side of the Door, which was all set in India. Um, Great and, movie, by the way. Oh, I did see some clips of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, it's, a, it's a cool, it was fun, but it was a long, it was with Fox and it was a long process and it, and it was tough, you know. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to do a shark movie. I'm a diver. I'm going to spend six weeks with... You know, diving, fun, sharks. This is going to be fucking. <laughs> this is this is everything. You know, everything you want to do. And I ended up in Basildon, in London, just outside London, in a in a, in a truck park. Okay, in, yeah. a place called Essex in yeah, London. Yeah, just outside London. it was. A, Wasn't quite what you had uh, planned. No. And so the tank. Okay, the tank was this uh, place next to a recycling plant, so it stank. Right, oh, uh, yeah. and uh, it was uh, it was a covered tank, but it was covered um, it, with a tent rather than like a building, like a permanent structure. It was yeah. covered, but basically with a black tent. It was insanely hot summer in England. We don't understand air conditioning because it, it's it's never hot. So I'm sitting there in this tent with this heat building up, and to get the um, to get the sediment in the water we have trucks of broccoli being coming in and you have the interns mincing up the broccoli and then i have huh. a special diver who goes around and puts the broccoli in the water wow. so when you when all the light catches it you've got your own current in the in the tank so it, look that's what gives the nobody'd ever done this before like so it was like uh because i always i looked at underwater movies and i just thought they're too clean you know you look at the abyss it's just it's too clean and i was like i want to have this sediment as a diver i want to be able to feel that yeah. so we had tons of broccoli going why, why broccoli? broccoli yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And broccoli uh, it's perfect it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> the way so how did you know that how did you did know you, broccoli because he's a diver yeah, we 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 tried we tried kale we tried, we tried like everything, like um, and, and in different veggies. So the first day of filming, Love it's that. like, ah, oh, this is kind of good. And then you can actually see like florets of broccoli <laughs> going through. And it's like, okay, the, the, we, we might need to make this a little bit finer. Uh, uh, but but that starts rotting, and then it was like it was probably about two weeks into the shoot where, you know, when the actresses go uh, down to the bottom of the tank, uh, they have like forty minutes in their tank. And you never bring people up, so it's a very you have to you have to be thinking constantly on your feet. Because how deep is that tank? It's about seven meters. Okay. I, I don't know what that is in American money, but it, it was pretty <laughs> deep. Uh, you know, it's like, years, um, um, uh, but, like twenty feet. Yeah, so, feet. yeah. So so it's properly down. They're in the cage, and they you can't bring people up because every time you bring someone up, that will then you'll lose an hour. 
Right. So, so is that, is that to do with the ears and? I don't really no, just, how it just, you know, logistics you of just, diving. Just, just kind of, kind of like, as soon as everybody comes up, then that's an hour gone. It just is an hour gone. So you just have to go, keep filming, keep filming. So then you can never stop. Jesus, Christ. you can never ever stop. The camera has to be rolling all the time. And it was only when we were about two weeks in, and Mandy's like, "Oh, Mandy, Mandy's got to come up. She's got to go to the loo." And I was like, "Yeah, okay, fine." comes up and she goes out to Lou and I'm like wait a second we've been doing this two weeks and no one else has gone to that <laughs> wait a <laughs> second so, no. so ev- of course that's all the and in the end even Mandy was going to the Lou in the town <laughs> so, uh, so it was ro- it was rot- oh, rotting shit. broccoli <laughs> urine milk as well so you put uh, milk in to make it cloudy the, the show must go on right? yeah <laughs> whatever it, it must, takes all, it must. In, all in this insane heat with no air conditioning I mean it was rancid the pools heated rancid. too do you think it was better to film in a tank like that or do you think you, you, you can't, probably over, you can't you, film in the sea you, you can't, can't do so open water yeah. wrecks the equipment no it, it's just for a, logistical too just, just, no 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 it's just you, it, like the the worst actually to be honest the, the actual filming side was fun the the worst by far of the filming uh was um was taking a boat out we we shot some stuff of a boat going out into the ocean in the dominican republic and you just don't want to do that where the fuck where's where's your crew gonna go where are you gonna put your light where's the electric you know nothing it's just a night you never you never want to go anywhere near the ocean even on top of the ocean, it's it, it's tough because, like, moving a boat around, you actually have to fucking move a boat around, and it and it's just impossible. So anything that you can have control over, yeah, you would never like to to be in to be a even a, in a shallow part of the ocean. It would just be an absolute. It's not worth it. How was uh, Matthew Modine? Was he fun? Oh, Modine is is like I could make if I could make every movie with Matthew Modine. He he just arrived, and. He, he's like I think within sort of 10 minutes he was like yeah I did this movie called uh, Full Metal Jacket as if like I hadn't heard of it and then uh, but then he told these stories and you, you work with you know I work with sort of people that have been around a bit and they tell very polished stories and it's all a bit he, it was like he'd just come off Full Metal Jacket you know he was like and he was so much fun and then when he got onto the stories of Cutthroat Island and Rennie oh, Harlan wow. and he has this amazing uh, story about um, flatliners because he you know Modine was the guy uh. back, you know in, in, in the in the 80s and um, uh, and uh, they offered him uh, Keith Sutherland's role in, in flatline I'm not sure I'm supposed to tell this but I'll tell it anyway. uh, <laughs> you must yes, you. Yeah. 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 So, so, so they offered him <laughs> the main role in, in flatliners and um uh, and he had the most powerful agent at the time, uh, and uh, the, they offered him the role, and they said, "This is the money." And and the producers came back and said, "Oh, look, sorry, this is a it's an ensemble piece, we, and we can't afford to pay that." And then they cast Keith Sutherland, uh, and then the agent was like, "Wait, we were negotiating. You just came to me, you told me, and I said, no, we need more money.' And then you go and cast someone else." We would what we were doing is we were negotiating, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, I thought you were just pa- passing on that." And because the agent was such a, you know, it was serious. It's, they were like, uh, "Okay, well, we can't, we we can't go back on that because we've now cast Keith Sutherland. So what we'll pay is the money that you wanted to just not be in the movie." <laughs> so, no. oh, so, wow. so, so he got paid to not be in Flatliners. <laughs> wow. Well, wow, talk about a rough life. Yeah, yeah. But he would tell, he would have all these stories. Like, and, I mean, his Cutthroat Island ones are brilliant. But he's just, he's, there's not many good, I mean, you know, you've, you, we we always talk about the good guys and the bad guys and, and, Very much uh, so, yeah. and some of them are just fucking amazing. Uh, and then some of them are, <laughs> oh, I mean, the, yeah, someone just amazing. Yeah. Mark, Mark yeah. Hamill can stop any set yeah. dead with yeah. his stories. He is an amazing storyteller. Yeah. And as soon as he starts telling you a story about anything remotely Star Wars related, yeah. everyone just stops working. Yeah. And he, he, he and he has the passion from. Oh, he's so yeah. passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, a yeah. beautiful guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one of the nicest guys I've ever worked yeah, with yeah, by yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Does he, outside Star Wars, does he have some fun, like, clusterfuck stories? Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about the voiceover work he was doing for yeah, the Joker, absolutely, yeah. dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is stories out of itself. Everyone gravitates towards the Star Wars, which, yeah. by the way, I have two Star Wars tattoos. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Uh -huh. But at the same time, he was the voice of Joker. Is that Phantom Menace I can see on your arm, though? This is uh, this is the Jedi Order yeah. right here, and then on uh, these two fingers, I have Darth's and Luke's lightsabers. Uh, so they're just do 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 do, and they're a little battling each other all the time. But hey, look, uh, you know, regardless of that, that's that's not important. No, he, he was really well known for the. Uh, I mean, I remember the first few people we told that we had Mark Hamill in the film. I reckon forty percent of them would would actually get, jump to the Joker voice before they would think of Hold on, the Luke voice, Skywalker, the voice of the Joker, yeah, cartoon, yeah, yeah, the cartoon Joker from. I didn't know that either. Actually, oh my god, yeah, yeah he's he's a phenomenal in it. He too. killed it. Yeah, I think I, I'd love to see him do it on the, the big cartoon screen. Joker. Yes. Hold on. I agree. What I love about Airborne. From like the 90s, 2000s, right? Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Oh, from I the animated series. Yeah. Yes. From, oh. What? Come come catch As up, Neil. C catch up, bro. I love <laughs> Yo, yo, that cartoon show was super serious for a cartoon show. The, the animated Batman, it was no one even laughed. It was just like straight scenes and like 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 slow dissolves out and shit. It was like a fucking like a film noir for a cartoon. Anyway, what's with with Airborne? What's great is 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 Hamill's like uh, he's the air con, air traffic control. Yeah. You, you could just you could see like it like the the scenes were initially written with just him and then it's like. If I uh, work with Mark Hamill, as well. <laughs> you can see by the end of it, like every. Oh, can I come in on this scene to work with Mark? Hamill? It was not difficult casting, <laughs> yeah. that, Yeah, any excuse to get on screen with him. Yeah, but no, yeah. he, he was. Um, he's definitely one of the good guys. He really is an amazing guy. Um, you know, I, I tell. I'll tell it quickly because I'm bored myself of telling this story. But it is a great story. Is that when we 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 actually shot Airborne in a place called Leicester. Which is middle of England. It's just how do I describe Leicester? It's uh, it's not as bad as Coventry. Is <laughs> <laughs> is probably as good as I can give it. Yeah, it's like a it's it's not a place you would expect to bump into Mark Hamill. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And they actually have a like a space museum there. So we used the um, air traffic control center from the space museum to double as the um, the airport um, traffic control center because obviously most airports need their traffic control centers to stop the yes, planes crashing. Right now, it's you know. kind of important. So anyway, so um, on the last night, um, Mark was doing some press interviews for us and um, we'd kept it out of the press, kept it off the radar that he was going to be there because he does get a few fanatics and it does get a bit hectic. And um, he's just finishing the last interview uh, in his trailer and I opened the trailer door and a stormtrooper walked past. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. And so I closed the door quickly Opened it again. Princess Leia walks past Chewie. It was like, it was the weirdest thing. It was like the cast of Star Wars walking past his trailer door. Wow. But what was weird about it was you would think if you'd have dressed up, if you'd have heard Mark Hamill was on set and you'd have dressed up as a Star Wars character to come and hunt him down, you'd think the first place you would check is something that looked like a film trailer. Yeah. But everyone was just walking past this trailer. <laughs> so I followed the, I followed the sort of the movement of people. This was like a Saturday night. <laughs> and it turned out they were all going to a party. There's like a, function room space you could hire at this place and they were all going to a party and it was a, a sci-fi oh, oh fancy my. dress party I won't do what and it was for a guy um a guy's 50th birthday but not only was it for his 50th birthday he was also celebrating the all clear he was five years clear of cancer oh wow so this was a big oh, big deal yeah. for this guy and he'd thrown you know a sci-fi party that 70 percent of people there were dressed up as star wars characters so um, anyway, there was a guy filming people as they went in. Everyone would do like a little personal message. Congratulations. You know, you've beaten cancer. This is amazing. So um, and the guy spotted a different actor, an English actor uh, who's in our film. And he ran over to him and said, what are you doing? You know, you, you know, can I can I get you to film a message for my guy? Because my friend, the other guy, the other actor in the film is really well known in the UK. And so uh, consequently, um, the guy's the actor's name, Billy, came to me and said, look, we should see if we can get this camera guy to go into Mark's trailer and do a message from... Can you imagine the guy when he's watching through his videos the next day? You know, there's like a message from Mark Hamill in there, you know? So, um, so I wandered off into Mark's trailer and sort of... I explained the situation said, Mark, would you mind if we get the, the video guy to come in and just do a quick 30-second message? And Mark was like, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's go in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, fuck, you know, here we go. This is going to be a thing. It's going to so, be a thing. you know, so we drive, drive to the entrance. They had this little red carpet set up. And we drive to the entrance and we get Mark out of the car. And we've, asked, we've sent a message for this guy to stand by the window. 
And as Mark Hamill gets out of the car on Saturday night in Leicester, this the, 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 the guy whose party it was just went white as a sheet. It was unbelievable. The colour just drained out. You could have knocked him over with a feather, you know? And his, Mark his walks cancer up. had come back. <laughs> oof, oof, dark. Dark, 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 dark uh, twist. So, so anyway, um, so we... So we um, we walked Mark over and Mark chatted to him. But by the time Mark was chatting to this guy, of course, what's happening is that the whole party now, the word's totally out that fucking Mark <laughs> Hamill stood on the fucking red carpet outside and I'm stood as a stormtrooper. So for the next, must have been 45 minutes, Mark signed every autograph, did every picture, said hello to everybody, did the whole thing, you know. He stood there after a full day of filming and you know what it's like on an indie yeah, set, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a full day of filming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He must have been on that red carpet half hour, 45 minutes, just signing autographs and saying hello to everybody. And, and then he had to go and get on a flight back to the States, you know? Wow, that's, that's so a great story. That's a measure of the man. That's, that's a, a good human, good yeah. human being right there. There's a few of them. There's a few of them. Do, Not do you know, many. Do you know what I honestly thought you were going to say? I thought you were going to say that like, he was like, hold on, they're having a Star Wars party where everyone's dressed up as Star Wars character. I can just go in there and no one even, will even notice me. I thought he was just going to go to the party and just be hanging out and no one will know that they were really talking to the real Mark Hamill. But he was like, all right, let's go back. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be brilliant. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Uh, Look, you know, I think when it comes to, you know, there's a separation where... You, you, Obviously, Mark Hamill was in this iconic uh, masterpiece called Star Wars, but then he is still humble enough to be a good human being like that. We don't see that a lot. Like, I don't know what you guys experience as being producers and directors. From my end, I experience a lot of divas and then a lot of humble, normal human beings. Oh, there's no shortage of divas. No well, shortage of I don't, divas. I don't see the crossover is my point, you know? And I think that's a very valuable thing to point out. You know, it, it, maybe I'm just not experienced and haven't done enough projects to have that. I, I tend know. to find, and I don't know what you think here, Joe, but I tend to find, generally speaking, um, the more famous people tend to be actually weirdly a little more laid back. And it tends, in my experience, to be people who are have a bit of a chip on their shoulder about oh, who they yeah. are or yeah. maybe who they were. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. We're both now thinking of various <laughs> people. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and they can be, I mean, the thing I've yeah. just done with, with Jay Muse and, yeah. and, and that that's been, we've been so lucky because we've met yeah. so many different people who, that yeah. I grew up watching on that film. Yeah. By the way, Jay's awesome. We, we, Jay's we, a legend. You, you yeah. invited us on set and I gotta, uh, I gotta give credit to Jay because he was sick that day. You were directing and he could, he could not be more hospitable he could not be more inviting and more cordial and he uh, you know he was very I, I first time meeting him I'm like hey man do you want us to go get you food blah 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 and you were like hey, Jay was like yo hey thank you guys for coming you know we really appreciate you yeah, but it was such a different dynamic there was there was no diva oh no no, no no Jay's, Jay's Jay is I mean this is Jason Muse, aka Jay from Jay and Silent Bob for anyone who's wondering Correct. And, and I'm producing his directorial debut at the moment and he is the most laid back, fun. He is Jay. I mean, he's so much fun to hang around with and complete and utter chaos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've always Mayhem. heard that, like, you know, the bigger the star, the bigger the person, you know? Like, that's what I've heard from a lot I, of people. I think that, that does add up from my experience. Pretty, not always, but, but pretty much. I mean, I could, obviously, it's, it's a shame because some of the stories you hear, I would love nothing yeah, more yeah, than yeah. to regale yeah. them here. But unfortunately, there has to be... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, a, a point, but um, but yeah, you hear some horrible shit. You really do, yeah, definitely. But also, then you get the Mark Hamill experience, you know, or or, or the Jason Mewes experience, you know, and you realise that it's all worth it. I mean, we had um, Stan Lee came on set, you know, yes. in his nineties, and uh, he was a lovely guy, taking the piss out of me and having a laugh, and you know, he, he was great, you know. And but it, it is um, invigorating when you do meet. Your Matthew oh, it's, Modine, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 that's exactly the right word. Is is invigorating because it's equally the whatever the opposite. It's it's like a vortex of your soul when you, when it's when it's not, and it's you just sometimes you wonder why the fuck am I doing? No, there's easier ways to make money, and then when, uh, and then when you when you meet someone um, uh, or you know group of actors, whatever that you really get on with, and it's just great. You know, and you can see you can see why like directors work with the same people over and over again. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. just great. You just come out of you know you step on set every day, and you're just like, you, you don't have to reach for you know. We were talking about the imaginary, the the secret words to make an actor 
trust what you're saying and you know you know talking about to unlock their feelings but it's actually if you have uh you know a really good um relationship with someone you know just now now doing i, I was i was working with with um uh these, these two kids um lewis pullman who's bill pullman's son and, and this um this actress uh bailey madison on on strangers and uh, you know i every day i'd sort of i'd come out onto set and you know we'd talk about something and my direction to it would, would just be like look guys don't fuck this up that would be that would be it could and you could you say don't fuck this up to christina hendrick uh she uh, she is she chill yeah Chris, christina christina is is um is really quite um relaxed and and um uh the the whole set on on strangers was like super you know i had we martin henderson is like a uh kiwi and it was it was good it was a really sort of sort of uh, um just just fun set so um have, have you guys seen the original strangers the, the strangers horror movie with, the original uh, yeah Liv tyler yes well, yes i have yeah he's just done he's just done the next one or the reboot I mean, oh, The Strangers, yeah, yeah. the original is one yeah, of my favorite sure. horrors. Yeah, yeah, favorite sure. horrors. It's a great movie. I, I, I've actually seen, I've seen the posters for it. But I just never knew what it was. What it yeah. was. I was waiting. I like to see like a trailer. Yeah, and it whatnot. comes out in March. It's going to be fun. It's, it's like proper. That, that's getting the theatrical over here. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, big. It, nice. It'll be a big, big release um, oh, in March. Man, yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. It's cool. It's a cool movie. Yeah. What was your favorite part about making that? As a, as far as like you know yeah. the project itself and having to go off of like. A template that was already established. Kind yeah, of, you know, it was. Like we could. Film. We could. It, it was. I got to make Christine basically. Uh, you know, Stephen that, King movie. The yeah. Stephen King movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I just. It was. You look as a director. You look at certain things that appeal to you, uh, and you know, I get the call. I'm the creaking door guy. You know, <laughs> so like if, there, if there's a script with a creaking door in it, you know, what's behind it? They call me. That's cool, yeah, so he, he, he'll know how to how to how to shoot that creaking door. Um, uh, so I get that a lot. But the, the thing about Strangers is it is it plays it has the truck in it a lot, and I really love Christine, and I always wanted to do a car movie, and so that there was that side of things, and it um, it was Strangers was a cool one because when when you watch it, you see is is you, you won't have seen anything shot like that for the last like 30 years I mean it's it like it's zoom lenses that I mean would would shame would shame a Charlton Heston movie from from you know one of, one of his <laughs> low budget uh, sci-fi ones um, uh, and and then split diopters and and then you know we've got like Bonnie Tyler on the soundtrack and 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 Kim Kim Wilde and Belinda Carlisle and you know, I, I just got to, I got a message yesterday from Tiffany, from you know, I think we're alone now, Tiffany, because yeah. she, um, they, they, the tra- she, the, the song's not actually in the movie, but it, it's on the trailer, and, and she wrote and said she was very touched that we used the song, and, and she, she really liked Forty Seven Years Down. And I was like, uh-huh. this, I have just fucking made it. <laughs> <laughs> in a world of double denim, I am now the it's king. Like screenshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, is it the well, same guys that are doing Strangers who you did Forty Seven with? Uh, they in no. In terms of the distribution. Oh, in, in, the producers are the same. No, the, I know James. Is yeah, there. James. Uh, um, the 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 people that they were sort of involved, but no, they're, they're a different company. Um, they're, they're, I mean, they've got about fifty million reasons to work with you again, haven't they? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with forty-seven, yeah. I mean, uh, that, that, yeah, that's that. No, that's a different. That's entertainment. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll we start shooting that later. What a, what's your favorite shark? This is a personal question. Uh, I, like from one shark lover to another, you know, like what? Yeah, what's you, you your know favorite what species? I, I, yeah, I I have to I have to. It's like I don't I don't want to be too schoolboy about it, like saying the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but. It is great whites. You can't, you know, if you're talking sharks, you're They're talking huge. great whites. Did you see They're that video of the, the largest great white ever I caught th- on footage? <laughs> with, a, with What was it, 20 something feet? No, it was like seven but, meters or something? But did you, uh, cause, uh, outside the cage. It yeah, was outside the shark non- cage. But uh, I think she was pregnant and it was like, it wasn't very terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was a fucking but, dinosaur. I don't know what you're talking amazing. about. Terrifying. Yeah, yeah. That was terrifying to me, dude. I, I just, it's phenomenal. I did, um, I've not done the cage diving thing. Have you swam with sharks before? But I've done, there's oddly, there's a, um, uh, one of the largest tanks uh, in Europe is is in Wales. 
um, and they have sand tiger sharks there, which are That's cool. yeah. So me to you, what is it? What's that? Like six feet there? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a meter is basically a yard. So it's like a meter is like three feet. So okay, it, three it, feet. It, yeah. It so so yeah, six so about about they're about six feet long, and you get to go. You go in the tank, and you have to stay at the bottom, and they circle around you. And it's fucking great. I mean, they are big old things. And I, 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 I got the, uh, it was a, like a photography thing. So I got a, just the best photograph I've ever had. Like as a director, you, um, I think anybody, uh, uh, Vinny will, I imagine you'll, you'll um, back me up on this. When you have a camera, you become invincible. Yeah. You do stupid things. So yes. I, I have this amazing shot where I stood up and I, took the picture of the sand, sand tigers have these amazing like they look terrifying they're not actually you know they would they're pretty docile as far yeah. as their demeanor yeah. but they look ferocious their teeth stick they out stick out and if they wanted to they could do you some fucking yeah, harm yeah. and i stood <laughs> up to, and i've got this shot the shark there and the the diving instructors i've got two metal poles and they're slamming them to get me to like get the fuck <laughs> down <laughs> uh, and it's an amazing photo but yeah uh, uh, i was not very popular after that but that's the only, <laughs> that, that's the only time i've done it I, and i i would love I, I mean mexico you can i think i don't know about um, I've done a bit of diving around here, but I, I, I don't know if there's any sharks around well, here. Well, out here in California, this is I don't surf. And the reason I don't surf is because I love sharks. And yeah. all, a lot of my friends surf out here. And I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. And they're like, why? What are you talking about, bro? And I'm like, yo, you dress up like the predator's food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I grew up in, in the Keys in Florida on the Coral Reef. You know, yeah. we, my uncle used to teach us when I'm like 13, 10, 13 years old to hold our breath, dive down, and ride the backs of black tip and reef sharks. No fucking way. Yeah, and in Lukey Reef, there was um, like these channels that are cut out by the currents in the reef. So like the from the surface to the reef bed was about 20 feet. And then beyond that was another 10 feet. And there were these like cut channels. So like we would grab, we would be snorkeling. So I wouldn't even have a tank. And I would hold my breath, dive down, grab onto the back of a, like a black tip or a reef shark and on the dorsal. And then they would go and fly through these channels. And you can't let go because in these uh, caverns are moray eels. So like if you let go, like I'm riding the back of a shark and there's green moray eels like... Like, if I let go, I'm dead. You're a literally like, Aquaman. It sounds like the title <laughs> sequence to a Disney movie. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's my childhood, bro. I don't know. That <laughs> I don't know. is crazy. It, it, it gave me such a respect and a love and admiration for the animal, is my yeah. point. And um, I don't swim and surf out here because of my understanding of sharks yeah. and great whites in particular but i'll go and i'll be like yeah i'll go dive on a reef and i'll go swim with sharks in florida in the keys in the bahamas because i'm not dressed like a fucking seal that they're trying to eat you know here it's it's totally so i think it, it you know, it's it's different whether it's in the West Coast, California, whether it's in Florida, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in, in all these habitats, and you know, Southern uh, South Africa. The, each environment yeah. uh, has a different uh, atmosphere and, and caters differently. And what you know, that's kind of why I was uh, inquiring about your love for sharks in your film. As I was like, I didn't know if you got inspired by any one of those environments or if you. If, if it, you know, you said great white, that, yeah. that's obviously the, that's the most terrifying to me. Yeah, I won't yeah. swim with a great white. Yeah. I won't even, I don't even know if I'll even, my respect, my admiration for the animal itself. I don't know if I'd get into a fucking shark cage with a great white around. Truthfully, dude, I'm, I'm, I, I, that's how I would do. I would do the is. cage. I would actually do standing like you can in Mexico. You can stand on the cage. I think I would probably do that until then it seemed like a very bad idea. Then I do you that you must not believe in irony, then. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that'd just be a perfect yeah, death yeah, for you. Yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. It? Oh fuck! You can imagine oh, the article my now. Oh god! Except then, then I would then the uh, the realities of it. Like in in forty seven minutes down, you know, they're like you've got an hour in your tanks. You haven't got an hour in your tank. See if no. you're down forty seven meters down, you got, you're dead already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fifteen minutes. Don't ruin it. <laughs> talking about the respect for the animal, Joe, you told a very interesting fact about your movie and about how 
you never harm the, the sharks now. Yeah. I think that's when you should talk about. So, yeah, I mean, Spoiler alert. That's, but, yeah, but in 47, and I'm just writing 48, I, the, the one thing I won't do is, is have any. Like, there's no... You, nobody kills. Nobody hurts sharks. I, don't, I, I find... So the sharks are there... The, the, you know, the, the terrifying thing, but the, also the ocean. And I don't, there's none of this like blowing them up or shooting them with spear guns or, you know, the shallows, you destroy the shark. I, I actually, I find that it, that's, that's not right. But personally, because I love sharks. I, I think I could, we were talking about it because I, we were talking about the screening of, uh, we just, when you test screen movies and how American audiences in particular, when, when the bad guys get killed, doesn't matter how horribly they get killed they stand up and they clap like i mean it's quite disturbing and i was just saying like <laughs> I, I, we probably could have gained some more points you know more box office if i if, if i'd blown up a couple of those sharks but i just i wouldn't want to do that i think that's wrong i think that's uh, that's invaluable yeah. that that right there is a staple point to make the movie regardless of the creative aspect regardless of the characters regardless of the premise the fact that you have that moral compass is is a precedent for to make the movie watchable in its first place, mm-hmm. and I think more people, more filmmakers, should adhere to that type of, of mentality. Interesting That's, if you still adhere to it when we get to fifty meters yeah. down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Space sharks. Fifty but, meters down, but even more money. But, like, sharks with lasers. <laughs> on there. Yeah, we'll blow up a couple of sharks. Yeah, you know? yeah. Fuck those bastards! I hated space Look, sharks. Look, man, anyway. if you need a shark wrangler, I'm here, bro. Yeah. I, I will come and I'll dive yeah. and I'll I'll, yeah. I'll punch a shark in the nose and you I'll grab. Can, by the gills you can, a- you can absolutely uh, no fear you can absolutely come and <laughs> sprinkle broccoli in my urine tank <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, dude, uh, this has been a, an amazing honor, an amazing pleasure. I want to wrap this up, but uh, before we go, I want to uh, have you guys let everyone know what you're working on, what direction you want to point, your social media, your films, what's coming up, what's you know, let everybody out there in the universe know what's going on with you, bro. I, I mean, for me, just watch, keep an eye on strangers, pray, pray at night, which comes out uh, on 9th of March, wide release in America. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, for me, it's Madness in the Method. Jay's Woo! directorial debut. Really yeah, excited yeah. about that. We've got a crazy cast. We haven't got a release date yet. Probably be first quarter next year. And and do you know what? I've actually just managed to do a brilliant trick where I've managed to deactivate my Twitter account and lose all of my followers. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not even kidding you. I lied. To, yeah, I... Uh, I'm not quite sure how I managed it. But on no. Instagram, I'm like Dominic underscore A underscore Burns, which I now realize is a terrible, terrible name, and I should have simplified it. That's all good. <laughs> the, look, you're, you're part of the so family. I've got no and Twitter followers and a shit Instagram. So. <laughs> yeah, so, this is 100%. So fuck you the, all. the reason we're having this episode right now is because of Dominic. So if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And I really appreciate it because yeah, not only you, have I gotten to know uh, Joe, and it, it, obviously I know you and Vince very intimately, but, it, you know, I, I learned a lot. How intimately? And what's what am I missing? Uh, <laughs> you're gonna you're find out. I mean, yeah. intimately, like I've gotten blackout drunk with these fools before. Like that's how. I know uh, not uh, of what you speak. And and maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, anyways, my my point is, thank you, thank you for uh, coordinating this. Thank you for bringing us on. I really appreciate the content, Vince. You got you want to you are the ringleader of your own film festival in the car series, right? Back yeah, in the, like that, that, that's right. That yeah. was amazing, dude. I saw I, I only saw it from online. But yeah, I wish you could have come. You should, I would love to come, but yeah, <laughs> I think you should plug that, bro, because that's a it's a phenomenal feat, dude. Well, very very quickly. It's it's um, essentially a film festival specializing in automotive content. So, you know, features, documentaries, oh, student sweet, work, nice. uh, motorsport coverage, anything, anything car, bike, you know, motor related. That's what we cater for, and it's the it's the main sort of film awards for that sort of industry. You yeah. got a website, haven't you, Vin? Was it's LondonMotorFilmFestival.com. Yep. Perfect. Check it out. Awesome. Well, on that note, uh, I think if, if there's anything else you guys uh, want to hit. No, thank you for having well, us. Well, yeah, hey, thank dude, you thank you. the Great honor fun. is ours, truthfully. It's sincerely, it's been not only a pleasure, but a, uh, an experience that I think is going to be one for the record books, right? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. There you go. For sure. And on that note, uh, I think we're out. We're out. Yeah, catch me at the life of Neil the Great, Devin. 
uh, Sailor underscore Dev. But more importantly, if you want to tweet at the show, it is at Skitbags Radio on Twitter, and you can email us skitbagsradio at gmail.com. Send us some love, send us some hate, send us your thoughts. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. We're nudes, nudes, send nudes. Send nudes. Uh, L- ladies, girl, ladies, ladies. Well, you know, hey, well, let's not discriminate. Oh, fucking ladies, well, guys, the, the, girls, guys, send, guys, send a, guys send the nudes to Devin. Ladies send the nudes to me. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is wrapping up our episode of Skip Eggs Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. And we got to show our love to everybody across the pond. I love you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you, mate. Thank We're you. up. Skip that, sweet.